and we sang, and the owner came from the back and they liked us so much that we've got a two hour gig there on February 22nd. Oh. So if you want to come to Round Rock on February 22nd, I don't know if that's a Thursday or Thursday day, because it's a Thursday. I don't know if the 22nd second is the third. Thursday, Thursday. It's the fourth Thursday. It's the fourth Thursday? Fourth Thursday is ideas. Well, I just didn't want to, you know, confuse and make it like a conflict of interest. No, I, and, and I just wanted to see. Yeah. Hi. Um, is everybody reading a poem or should I be? Yeah. All kinds of poems. Yeah. Okay. Just keep it clean. <laughs> I was going to read periodic table poems, if that is okay with you guys. Is that okay with you? Um, I know that. The is there one that celebrates Black History Month? No. <laughs> no there are African American chemists I, who have. But I don't know if they happen to be. One. I don't know if they happen to be people that I've mentioned in here. I uh, couldn't tell you because yeah. I never. I don't think about. It. You know, I don't look back. I know what, you know some of them are female, and I would get that, but I don't know the race of them. Which is good. Which is good. <laughs> um, anyway. I thought I'd pick three uh, different ones. This one is a weird one for doing this first one. Uh, and it is for nitrogen. This is nitrogen. I'm afraid to answer my phone today, ever since he called me before to tell me he has AIDS. I've been afraid to answer my phone to hear that his condition has turned to the worse, or that he just died. His T-cell count has been at zero for over two months now. He lost his job. The last word was that he was waiting for a chance for uh, entrance entra into a study where he might be able to get a new set of medications. And waiting is something he cannot do. So I've looked at the homeopathic options, but it sounds like I'm gonna be like his mother telling him to eat more fresh fruits and veggies. Don't eat raw seafood or raw eggs. Cook your meat until it's well done so you can get the protein that you so desperately need. And I've been looking at these chemical compounds and all of these drugs that are all too expensive. And I was surprised to see how many times I saw nitrogen listed in these drug compounds. Nitrogen. I've only heard of it as like liquid nitrogen for super cooling. To a row isn't it liquid nitrogen and then drop it so it shatters. I've even heard of that nitrogen capsule widgets, quote unquote widgets, um, car are, are used to carbonate stouts or, or that it's mixed with oxygen to make a laughing gas. Maybe I need nitrous oxide because yesterday was the first day I hadn't cried. It might have been the first time, and, and I'd be fine for a half hour, but then something would trigger it off in my mind. I, I thought that maybe I was getting used to the news, but I just cried again. On the phone, you said that you can't let the thought of death kill you, and I was trying so hard to not just start sobbing right there and then. You see, this is why I'm afraid to answer the phone now. You were on the phone with me, saying that you just have to get used to the fact that you're not going to grow old or have a family. You said that some people feel like they're on death's door with a T-cell count of 400, and some people can run marathons with a T-cell count of zero. On the phone, you first told me that yours was 80, and you felt fine. A little run down, but that was to be expected. Then it dropped lower. And now I'm afraid to answer the phone to hear the next round of news. So now I sit here and I read about the antiretroviral drugs that may or you may or may not be able to take, protease inhibitors, integrase inhibitors. And I look at those chemical compounds and all those drugs with hydrogen, carbon, oxygen, occasionally fluorine or sulfur. And I'm surprised with the surprisingly ever-present nitrogen. I, I stare at these compounds. Wish I could put the elements together myself and give you what you need. Why did I have to learn about all these compounds in chemistry class if I couldn't make these compounds to help you live? Because now all I can do is sit here and read and fear my telephone ringing. Mm. 
That is a true story. I know someone, and um, he got on medications, and he's doing very, very well. And he was a groomsman in my wedding, and he got married, and they have a son, Jackson, is kind of so low, and he's doing so incredibly well, which makes me very, very, very happy. So, so there's good news in that story. It's just heartbreaking when you first hear that stuff, you know. So, um, this one's more in the middle of the periodic table, and it's called cesium. Is this the best of times? Is this the worst of times? Or is this just one of those times? Only humans understand time. Where did all the time go? We always say, do we even know? Time slips away as we look for ways to keep time every day, right down to the nanosecond. Because without my cesium, I wouldn't be so obsessed with being on time for absolutely everything. You know, without cesium doctors, <laughs> cesium, sorry, let me say that again. Without cesium clocks, everyone would be forced to be their own elusive clues, to keep their own elusive selves when it comes to their own time in this global universe. We can thank so we can thank cesium-133 for producing identical radiation of exactly the same frequency, which makes cesium perfect for cesium atomic clocks, and and then it was used for um, for measuring time and monitoring time globally with such perfect skill. <laughs> perfect for those that are obsessed with time. <laughs> So I have to admit, though, and I have to remember that with cesium or without, time is only a human construct. Well, I'll need to check my watch and remind myself of this at times like these. <laughs> this last one because it talks about February 2nd, the day is February 1st, because this one this was dis uh, discovered. So. Uh, and this one is Unum Pentium 115 in the periodic table. It now has a name. It's from Moscow, some Moscovium. But when I wrote it, it didn't have a name. So this is my mistitled Unum Pentium. A month before you died, on the day that she was born, that was very possibly the last day I talked to you. I know you loved me. But in the grand scheme of things, you had to know this relationship couldn't last. When you first asked me out, my answer was quick. I think it was a hundred milliseconds before I said no. You had to know that with a half-life so short, we didn't stand a chance. And on that day, February 2nd, I sat on the other side of the country at a bar with a man who introduced me to philosophy. It was good to see him, to remind myself of how I wanted to live, remembering how chemical reactions were supposed to last. I then realized this unintended consequences of this pent-up friction between us. Try to smash the right ions from us together to see what happens. See if anything survives long enough to even measure. You should know we had an uphill battle with us. A hundred and fifteen days after February 2nd, three months after you died, was when I almost died too. Because even though you bombarded me with your high excitation energy, this hot fusion would never work. And look at what is, what is left with me. I didn't want you to die. I didn't want you to be destroyed. Uh, did you seal your fate by trying to bond with a part of me? Or, or should I have trusted my first instincts and kept you away so that your destruction wouldn't hurt me so? I wish I could have told you that this systematic elemental bombardment of us, this radioactive reaction, was only temporary. This doesn't occur in nature. We had to work so hard to merely try to make something of us. And as much as I hate to admit it, I wonder if this was never meant to be. 